Okay, so in this video we're asked to derive the center of mass for a semicircular arc. So we've got some theta here, we've got some d theta, we've got a set of axes, we've got our semicircular arc there. What we want to do is we want to find the center of mass. So let's start with the x center of mass. Well clearly, based on what we've defined with our axes, the x center of mass is equal to zero. We know that the center of mass has got to lie along this line and that's by symmetry. Because this object is symmetrical, got the same mass on this side, we're assuming it's uniform, we know that obviously it must lie in the center line. So somewhere along this line is our center of mass. And that's purely by symmetry because we've got the same mass on this side, same mass on that side. So um, that's half the problem done, I guess. But uh, obviously for the y center of mass, we're going to have to do a bit more calculation than that. But the x center of mass is simply in our coordinate system somewhere along this line, the y axis. So now we know that the y center of mass is going to be the integral. And we're going to have to integrate from 0 to pi because we want to integrate throughout the whole semicircle. We're going to get this in terms of theta in a moment. Um, but what it is is it's always y, which is the y coordinate of the mass. We're integrating all the y coordinates of the mass multiplied by, um, obviously, the contribution, so how heavy they are. Of course, that's uniform, so we'll find an expression for dm very shortly. And then we're only going from 0 to pi dm as well. So this is the common formula for the center of mass. Just remember it. The way I like to remember it is it's variable times dm and then the integral with the limits. And then just in the denominator, it's just the integral dm. So sometimes you may see it written as, say, 1 on m integral of, say, you might see x dm or something like that. Um, but I've just got y here because obviously we're working with the y coordinate. Now, that's the same thing. Because if we just integrate all the differential masses, we're going to get the total mass anyway. So, what we're going to do here is we are going to first um, try and get this in terms of theta. Because that's the hint that was given in the problem. The hint said um, try and express this center of mass problem in terms of theta. So we've got to think about, well, what is the y-coordinate of our masses? So if we pick a mass here, what is its y-coordinate? Well, we can determine that that's r sine theta in this case. When we think about the y-coordinate, theta is there. We think about the unit circle, sine theta is like in the y-direction. So what we actually get is that's the distance in the y-direction. And if we, if we do a quick sanity check just to make sure that that's okay, what we do is we, we think r sine theta as being the y-coordinate for the um, position of the mass around the ring. We pick pi on two radians, so 90 degrees. If we think about r sine theta at pi on two degrees, well, that's just r. So obviously that's correct because the y-coordinate there would be r. It would be the radius of this circle. So it does make sense, and that may not necessarily be immediately obvious the first time you do problems like this. The key thing is just to practice and think about, well, how do I express what I'm doing? How do I express the mass in my relevant coordinate axis? So whether it's x or y, how do I express it in terms of the variables I have? And in this case, we're expressing it based on an angle. And what we also need to work out now is how we can introduce d theta because obviously we we're introducing an angle term into this integral so we obviously need to going to integrate with respect to theta so d theta is obviously related to this length here um, d theta is actually just that little bit in there but what we actually see is if we know our arc length formula this is a radius this is d theta in here we're going to end up with r d theta there so what we can actually say then is okay the differential mass, we imagine the differential mass of this little element, because it's a thin rod that we just sort of bent around, a thin wire, what we can say is that lambda is equal to uh, dm on some differential length, and the differential length is just going to be that little bit there. It's going to be r d theta just by the arc length formula. So what this tells us is that dm, whenever we see that in our integral, that is really equivalent to... Um, just dl lambda, just by rearranging there. And, well, dl is just what we worked out. It's rd theta. So we end up with rd theta l as being... Sorry, rd theta lambda as being 
the actual value for the differential mass. So now we can substitute this into our center of mass equation. So integrating from 0 to pi, and um, y was just the y-coordinate of the masses, which we identified as being r sine theta. And obviously now we need to substitute in dm, and dm, well, we just worked that out, it's lambda rd theta, and that's going to be divided by the differential masses. So we're going from 0 to pi of the differential mass, and the differential mass, well, again, we just worked it out, r lambda d theta. I'm going to pull out the constants from integration to make this a little bit simpler. So I pull out r squared from the top, so I'm pulling out both the r's. I'm pulling out the lambda, and in the bottom I'm pulling out an r and the lambda as well, because they're obviously constant. The radius of the arc is constant, so we don't need to worry about it. And the line density is constant because it's a uniform wire that we've been around into a semicircular arc. So now we're going from 0 to pi of sine theta d theta. And that's on the integral 0 to pi of theta. Uh, sorry. Just 1 d theta. Because we've pulled everything out from the bottom here except for d theta. So now we can see, okay, they're obviously going to cancel down, so we're just going to get r, which is good because it means we're expressing our center of mass in y in terms of r, the radius. So we end up with r, and when we integrate sine theta, we're going to get negative cosine theta, limits of 0 to pi. And then when we integrate 1 d theta, we're just going to end up with theta, 0 to pi, and that's going to be equal to r. Then we take this and we plug in our limits, so negative cos of pi, take negative cos of 0, so it's going to be plus cos of 0, because it's a double negative, divided by, and we basically pi takes 0, because what we do is we substitute in theta equals pi, and then theta equals 0, so clearly that's just pi in the denominator there, so what we're going to end up with r. Uh, Cosine of pi is negative 1, so we've got negative negative 1, so that's positive 1, plus cosine of 1, which is just 1, on pi. So we end up with um, 2 pi, 2 on pi um, times the radius as being the y position of the center of mass. So the x position of the center of mass is 0, and the y position of the center of mass is 2 pi on r. So 2 pi on r, so obviously that's a, just a constant. 2 pi on r, well, it's the same as having 2 on 3.14 r. So it's probably, you know, somewhere along there as being the center of mass, which seems realistic because remember, we've, we haven't got any mass down here. It's all concentrated up here. Uh, so that seems like a reasonable position for it. So that's how you go about doing the center of mass problem. The key thing is just to remember this integral and how you can sort of get your variables in terms of other variables. Those are the two key challenging things that so will take a bit of practice. Hopefully this video makes sense. Let me know if you have any comments. Thank you for watching.